Now, coming to the, to the topic um, and to the Leonardo's presentation, I have uh, three brief remarks uh, I want to share with you for the discussion. The first one is that it is not very common in this kind of uh, meetings where we discuss uh, usually electricity and gas to talk about buildings and refurbishment of buildings. And uh, in fact, this was a strange, I remember when the, the first the request came to the think team, uh, many people found that this was a very strange uh, request and it took some time until everybody realized the importance of the topic. And um, uh, of course, now after uh, having written and published the report, this becomes even more clear to everybody. So it's, uh, it's uh, something that uh, is not usually on the agenda of energy regulators and uh, not very, it's not very common to see it associated with electricity and gas markets. But uh, as we, we have uh, understood, it is extremely important. We cannot ignore objects that represent 40% of total final energy consumption, as Leonardo has pointed out. And in fact, it's a shame that we have ignored them for so long. So it's a, a good turning point uh, in the awareness of uh, the experts involved in the field of uh, electricity and gas markets. Uh, now, the second remark is uh, about the intelligent way that the, the regulatory toolkit was applied to this new object of research. So, as you have seen, uh, the application, the systematic and, and, and the intelligent and smart application of the regulatory toolkit to this problem of refurbishing buildings in order to reduce CO2 emissions by 2050 uh, proved to be very useful and very successful and we, we came to some very concrete recommendations and conclusions and uh, in part I think this was because of the discipline of the regulatory approach. And so it, uh, it was a very nice way of uh, um, applying uh, multidisciplinary uh, knowledge in this field. Now, the reverse can also be done, and this is my third and last remark. I mean, we, Leonardo and, and his research team, they have applied the, the regulatory approach and the regulatory toolkit to the issue of buildings and the buildings refurbishment, but we can also apply the lessons learned from this research work and uh, the lessons learned and the better knowledge we have nowadays about buildings and uh, buildings as uh, uh, entities with uh, relevance, a high relevance in the ele electricity and gas markets, exactly to think about uh, uh, the role these buildings not only the, new, the, the old refurbished buildings, but also the new buildings, of course, have or the role they may play in the electricity and gas and the energy markets of the future. Um, well, two, two aspects, I think, are relevant in this context. The first one is that clearly there is a link between electricity, heating and cooling, gas, other fuels. So it's... Uh, um, a good example uh, showing us that we have to look at energy uh, as uh, a broad issue, not only focusing on electricity or treating electricity and gas separately as we tend to do, as we have done for many years, uh, separating the problems and then trying to fix the electricity uh, market, trying to fix the gas market. These, these are interconnected, of course. And uh, we see also with uh, unconventional <coughs> gas nowadays how the different forms of energy, primary and final energy, are interlinked. And we should uh, uh, also reflect this economic and physical reality in the um, uh, research world. We should be more um, <coughs> open to this kind of uh, inter interactions and interconnections between different forms of energy and reflect this in our research and the way we think about energy, 
not only on research at the research level, but also at the policy level, I think. And when you, when you hear some speeches uh, in parliaments or in governments uh, or from uh, officials in different administrations, you have the impression very often that uh, still there is a, a silo thinking about energy, that this uh, holistic approach is not yet as uh, spread as it should be. So there is, uh, this is a, an interesting uh, outcome, I think, of this report. It obliges us to think about this interaction among different, among all types of electricity. The second thing is that, um, well, buildings, we have learned, they are very important in, for, the, for energy uh, policy because they represent a substantial, a very important point of consumption, of energy consumption. Uh, this consumption depends, and this is one of the messages we, we, got, we get, this, message, this consumption depends to a very large uh, extent to, uh, uh, from the, the quality of the buildings, from the isolation of the buildings, from the, the way the buildings are, construct, are, are, are constructed, are, are the materials we use, but also, of course, the energy consumption in the buildings depends also on the way we use uh, the energy. This means the way we interact with the building and the kind of appliances we put inside uh, the building and the way we use these appliances. And this appli the use of these appliances can, uh, again, interact with the building itself. Take, for instance, lighting, of course, uh, the architectural solutions for natural lighting will have an impact on the consumption, in this case electricity consumption for lighting within uh, the building. And uh, here the interesting point is, I think, that the new information and communication technologies allow us today already to control the way we use energy in the building, taking into account also the, character the physical characteristics of the building itself, not only the characteristics of the appliances, the facilities within the building, but also the building. Uh, the building is, is, is a lively organism, and to some extent we can control it. And we can control, of course, the way we use the heating, the cooling, the, the lighting within the building. These new information and communication technologies allow us to look at the energy consumption within the building, not as something given, not as a load, as we call it in the electricity market, something passive, something that is there and has to be taken into account by the good people who are generating, producing the energy to satisfy this demand. We may look now, thanks to the new technologies, ICT, to demand, to energy demand in the buildings as one part of the, one active part of the equation, of the energy equation, together with the generation side, the supply side, and the grid side, the, the Grid in the broad sense of networks, including storage and so on and so forth. And uh, this is the, the big challenge. And this is something that invites us to look at the buildings, the refurbished or the new buildings, uh, as a place where we have energy consumption, where we have uh, points of energy consumption, and we can monitor and control these points, and this consumption can also participate in different energy markets, and they can be part of different markets, uh, electricity and gas and district heating and cooling and so on and so forth. So we can, thanks also to this uh, uh, report, to this reflection we did about buildings and the importance of refurbishing buildings from the energy point of view, this leads us, I think, to the, the idea of the future of the future organization of energy markets, which will be very different from what we have known in the past, not only because we have now so many windmills and the new forms of electricity generation, but also because we can integrate, there is a continuum from uh, the controller of the light in this building 
and the windmill somewhere in the North Sea and the conventional power plant, and this all interconnected through a smart grid thanks to the new technologies. So I think that this report, in fact, gives us much more than just some suggestions about uh, uh, where to buy a new house and how to refurbish our old house. Thanks. Okay, thank you.